Well, hello, this is Adam, and welcome back to Rare Classic Cars. Today, something for those of you who say, well, why don't I own a wagon, or do I own a wagon? Well, I do, and this is a 1974 Mercury Colony Park wagon. Kind of the last of the big wagons. They did produce this until 1978, but it was this platform that came out in 1969 for Ford and then ran all the way until that 1978 model year. In between this and the GM clamshell wagons from 71 to 76, then also the Chrysler wagons, this is really the last of the truly big wagons with the big block engines. And if you have to ask me, well, what is really the best wagon that delivered upon its mission in terms of spaciousness, ride comfort, passenger comfort, seating comfort, it's probably this wagon. And I would say good power. Yes, it's 1974 and this 460 under hood, which was optional by the way, only makes 195 horsepower, but it's plenty peppy. It does not feel like a slug at all, in spite of this vehicle weighing almost 5,000 pounds. It is a heavy, heavy vehicle. And as I said, I think that this wagon is really the best and most true to its mission. And of course, the GM fans, of which I am one, are gonna say, well, what about those clamshell wagons? How can you say that this is better than those? You know, the clamshell wagons, I think, are something that people look back on romantically. But if they were daily drivers, they really had a number of impractical elements to them, most notably that clamshell feature, which if you drove those in winter climates, the wagon gate tended to fall off track. You know, it didn't always work that well. Uh, and the glass had to bend, by the way, on those. It bends at about a 15 degree angle going up into the roof. And you have to sit there and kind of wait for the whole thing to the glass to go up, the tailgate to drop for you to load things. You can imagine that wasn't great in the rain. This, you just open up the back door and it's a two-way tailgate and it's pretty easy. The Chrysler's also, I think, you know, are really stout wagons, great engines. They could tow 7,000 pounds on a unibody chassis. But the thing to me that I really don't care for the, Chrys the Chrysler wagons is that they're noisy on the inside, especially the fuselage era Chrysler wagons. They're not overly quiet and they're not super comfortable. They're, they ride like a truck and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just my personal preference. This wagon does not ride like a truck. You go over a set of railroad tracks or undulating pavement and it just pff, perfectly straight, no pitches, rolls, anything like that. It rides beautifully and the seats are super comfortable. This car does have the optional Colony Park luxury trim, which we'll talk about in a second, but it just does so many things well for a wagon. You could fit tons of people in here. This is one that has the rear facing seats as well, but I think that for my money, this is the best. These Colony Park wagons in particular from 69 to 78, although they dropped kind of the upper end, you know, let's say trim, after the mid 70s. So let's take the camera off and talk more about this wagon and why I think some things are special about it. Okay, so here you are with the Colony Park wagon and let's do a walk around. What's special about it? Well, how many wagons do you know that have hidden headlights? Yes, there were the Plymouth Furies, but really other than that, I can't think of too many other wagons that had the hidden headlights outside of Ford. Hidden headlights weren't a GM thing. And this 1974 front end is a one year only front end. I've talked about this in other videos, but for those who haven't seen, this grill is now plastic. In 73 it was metal, 71 and two it was plastic. But, but it also doesn't spill into the headlights like the 73 does. This car also has what Mercury called yacht deck paneling on the side. So it's got like a wood grain, but then it also has these black lines in it and this car does have the original wood grain on it it's in decent shape it's got some checking though but it is all original as is the paint so i have not touched it i do have a set of the turbine vane optional wheel covers that are going to look much better on this i would love to have an nos set or near nos set if somebody has one i've got kind of a driver quality set i would say As we walk around it, let's just take a look on the inside. And this is where this wagon really shines. I've got the seatbelt buckled because 
This is a 74 with the seat belt interlock. It won't start unless the seat belt is buckled. So first you have, this does have, as I mentioned, the Colony Park Luxury trim, which really turned this wagon into a marquee brome from an interior perspective, aside from the fabric used, which is this really durable, Ford called it actually Duraweave on their wagons on the Country Squires, but it's a wonderfully durable fabric. Seats are super comfortable, very poofy armrest. And you can see it's got the Mercury dash, similar to the Ford. This car has a lot of options. It has automatic climate control. You can see there, just set the temperature. It does have, I think, four or five fan speeds. It just selects between low and high in those. And if you want to force it on the max setting, you can turn it up there. It does have AM, FM radio. It has a clock that still works. You can see it's moving. Power rear window, tilt telescoping wheel. First year for the red slash orange index pointers there, 73 they were white. Power windows, no power locks on this. 460 V8 under hood. Power driver's seat. Which you can see there in the rear facing seats. Oh, let me unlock it. Take a look how much room you have back here. Pretty roomy. These station wagons were actually off of the LTD wheelbase, 121 inch wheelbase as opposed to the 124 inch wheelbase. But super spacious inside. Doors close great, just like Fords of the Air. It does have the locking hood release, which is good and annoying. You can see I just leave a key in there. Not too worried these days about somebody stealing it. And look at this carpeting, shag carpet, just what you want on your wagon. Feels like a pillow under your feet. Going around the back here, you can see I've got the rear window down. It does have the air deflector, kind of a cool yacht deck paneling on the back that says Mercury. Open the tailgate here, and you can see the seats. There they are. One on each side. I don't think they'd be comfortable for the long trip, but they exist there. And here, when you open this side, you got this handy dandy little button that you push and it releases the seat. So you can fold the seat if you want down and carry more cargo. I love that yacht deck paneling look. And by the way, this is the spare tire bulge down here. Fords did that. Unique feature. Let's take a look under hood. And somebody's gonna love that this under hood bay is detailed. The previous owner actually did it. But there we go, 460, four Venturi, all of 190 horsepower, but don't let that fool you. I mean, this, this wagon scoots pretty well. It's not going to be a rocket ship, but you certainly don't feel like you're accelerating away from the stoplight slower than modern traffic. If anything, you feel like you're accelerating away faster. Here is the seatbelt interlock button. That's the override that if there was a problem with the system, you could push the red button and it will let you start the vehicle once without your seatbelt buckled. Does have air conditioning and tons of coffee cans under hood for vacuum reservoirs. This engine runs super smooth. Let's start it up.
just great. Make sure, by the way, you all you check your fan clutch, particularly on these 460s. They tend to go dead, and then the cars run warm. I've replaced this one. It does have dual exhaust? Exhaust on the wagons face sideways so that they don't backdraft into the open rear window. Just a great running vehicle. And I think the best thing of all of this vehicle is it has that Ford ride from the 70s and even the 60s, that very nautical, soft, some would say mushy ride, but I don't care. It's great in this wagon. This thing rides so much better than the GM clamshell wagons, which also tended to have a little bit of rattles. There's no rattles in this vehicle. It's completely tight, even over bumps. And it's quiet on the inside at the freeway. It's very, very quiet. The Chrysler wagons that I've driven, as I said, are quite noisy on the inside. And it really, to me, detracts from the overall experience, which is unfortunate because the engines and transmissions in the Chryslers are really, really good. Well, let's take this for a brief ride and see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we are driving down. This is not great pavement here, but oh my gosh, this car just soaks it up. No issues. These Fords of this era, particularly the 73 and 74 model years, I would say, the 71s, 2s, 69, 70s, those really ride great. But the 73s and 4s are just on a whole nother level. So silent, so smooth. Mercury used to advertise Ride by Lincoln Mercury, and it wasn't just words. I mean, this thing is so comfortable with the power seat, it's cushy, armrest. And you've got relatively good power from this big block. I mean, this car isn't going to be super fast. It weighs 5,000 pounds and is only 190 horsepower, but it's tons of torque. And you really don't miss the extra horsepower. Sure, yeah, it'd be great to have 500 horsepower under hood, but this is just, just fine. And after this, it really didn't get any better for wagons, in my opinion. You know, they really don't make wagons today. There are a few, but they're very, very rare. And this is the last of the wagons you could get with a big block. These came standard with a 400 V8. This has the 460. But the big block just makes these so much more enjoyable, whether it's this or the Chryslers or the GM wagons. You know, after this, you get into wagons with downsized engines. And then in the 80s, like the GMs have the old 307, which, you know, or a Chevy 305, which aren't bad engines. They're just, they don't have the the power and the torque to take away from a stoplight or, or pull away from a stoplight with you know that little shove in your in your back this wagon does and i will say for a very heavy car it does corner and especially a ford relatively level i don't detect a huge amount of body lean as i go around this corner like this pretty gosh darn level I think these Ford wagons of this era are just excellent, excellent driving vehicles. You know, if you own one, the only real drawbacks I will say are the carburetor, which we've talked about in other videos, but you can swap that out, put Edelbrock or Holly on it, it'll work a lot better. This car still has its original Autolite 4300 or Motorcraft 4300, but probably better for you to swap it out. And other than that, in the power window gears, that they have plastic torque pins that like to shred themselves. Those are kind of the worst issues with these. The engines, transmissions, rear ends, very, very durable. 
The Colony Park is also super rare. They only made about 10,000 of these in 1974. And by registration database, it's not publicly available, but that I have access to, there's only about 20 registered in the US. There may be more out there, but they're super rare. They just did not make many. Ford made a lot more country squires, about 60,000 country squires in 74. And a couple years earlier, Ford was selling over 120,000 country squires. Mercury was selling about 20,000 colony parks. The OPEC oil embargo in 73 really just killed the sales of these big things. You can imagine, especially ones with the big blocks, they aren't getting good mileage and gas was expensive. But whomever ordered this really wanted a Lincoln in a station wagon form. Because this car's window sticker with all the options totaled $6,700. A Lincoln was about $8,000 base price. So you're really approaching Lincoln territory with something like this. And it rides like a Lincoln. Hope you enjoyed this video on the 74 Colony Park. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and bottom right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again.